Hello and welcome to For Real. It's Wednesday, so that means it's time for this week's News Moto. Before we get started, could I please impose on you to like, subscribe, comment and share our videos. Doing these simple things really helps us to get more people watching our videos. And more people watching means YouTube pays us more money. And all the money that we make from YouTube, we donate to charities here in Cambodia. Every last cent. We're for real about this. In the description of this video, you can see the amounts and the charities that we've donated to so far. We don't want your money, honey. We just want your time. And since you're already here, let's get started. Just a quick note, today's ride is from our recent visit to Kep. If you're interested in seeing today's footage again, but with a narration that tells you what we're looking at, please let us know in the comments and we will oblige. First up, we have some good news in COVID numbers. For the 10th consecutive day, COVID case totals were lower than they have been for some time. Today, Cambodia announced the lowest daily case figure since the 19th of June. There were just 486 new cases, bringing the overall total to 83,384. But new Delta cases in Oda Mianche and Kempong Spu show that the Delta is alive and thriving in Cambodia. Observers are hoping that the border reopening on Friday the 13th traditionally considered an unlucky day in Western culture, will prove instead to be a lucky day for the kingdom. More than 200 Cambodians are currently stranded on the Thailand side of the Cambodia-Thailand border. They're living in tent villages with no electricity or running water as they wait for the border to open. They've been provided with food and shelter by the Cambodian embassy officials and Thai authorities. So far, more than 15,000 Cambodian workers have contracted COVID-19 in Thailand. There are estimated to be 2 million Cambodians living and working in Thailand. 2 million is a huge number considering that Cambodia's population is only 16 million in total. These people are mostly employed in the construction industry and other informal jobs. Some are there legally and some are not. Once the borders open, the Cambodians waiting will begin to cross and it's likely that some of these people will test positive for COVID. The most concerning factor, of course, is that these potential cases could be the Delta variant. The Cambodian government has procured advanced sequencing equipment that can detect the Delta variant in under two hours instead of the previous four to five days. This improvement in testing will probably lead to a temporary spike in the number of Delta cases found in Cambodia. In a news report published this morning, the governors of the eight lockdown provinces said they are confident that they are ready to handle the influx of returning Cambodians. They have prepared separate facilities to house those who are diagnosed with the Delta variant in an attempt to keep it from spreading into the local population. More than 10,000 Cambodians are expected to pour into the country on Friday and over the weekend. Returnees that are currently in their final days of quarantine will be returned to their home provinces to make room for the new returnees. In Kempot, nearly 4,000 beds have been set up to receive new returnees. The governor said the municipal administration must start implementing three main measures. These include sending the returnees back to their respective villages and towns once they've finished quarantine, receiving workers who are currently under quarantine in the provinces bordering Kampot, and thirdly, establishing emergency medical centres for workers from the border provinces. The Minister of Post and Telecommunications said they are now ready to acquire 2 million rapid test kits from China to sell to the public at a cost of just $2 each. He said that the kits are easy to use and are a high quality shallow nostril test, so not the usual brain scraping test. If you want to see a video of my Cambodian COVID test experience, aka the full brain scrape, I'll put a link to that in the comments so you can enjoy it. Local markets have become a hotspot for transmission of COVID in Cambodia. Authorities have found cases of COVID at BKK1 market in Phnom Penh three times in recent months. Palin province officials decided to temporarily close Samaki Market and Sa Tame for a second time. And in Oda Mianche, provincial authorities have temporarily shut down nine villages and three markets in two communes. This is happening all over Cambodia. It's due to the poor ventilation in markets, the difficulty in maintaining social distance in cramped spaces as well. Add in people from all around coming and going and you have a recipe for transmission. But the Siem Reap Provincial Administration is planning to push through with the reopening of Sa Lu, the biggest market in the province, with a new seven-day rotation system. What does that involve? Well, half of the market's vendors will sell for seven days, then after that period the other half will be able to sell for the next seven days. Anyone who wants to continue to sell after the seven-day period is over can set up shop at the temporary market located on Street 60. 
If you've been to um, Siem Reap, you'll know that that's the location where you go to buy your tickets to visit the Angkor Archaeological Park. Third one's a charm. Cambodia has started its third dose booster program. People who have been vaccinated with either Sinopharm or Sinovac will receive an AstraZeneca booster. And those who initially had the AstraZeneca vaccine will be given Sinovac as the third booster shot to ensure maximum antibody buildup and resistance. Germany and Israel have announced plans for booster shot programs and a growing list of countries including the United Arab Emirates, China and Russia have already started administering boosters. Prime Minister Hun Sen said that Cambodia will use the UK donated AstraZeneca vaccines in the third dose or booster dose vaccination campaign in the country. The third dose has been successfully administered to 67,637 people in the seven provinces which border Thailand and whose borders are expected to be reopened in the next two days. Frontline workers along the Cambodian Thai border were given priority to receive the booster doses. Those people include frontline medical practitioners and civil servants, as well as contracted officials and family members of the armed forces. AstraZeneca booster shots for frontline workers will also be available in Phnom Penh from Thursday, August the 12th until the 10th of September. You might remember the man from last week who was detained for attacking monks at a Phnom Penh pagoda. He has since become the victim of vigilante justice. He was initially arrested and then released after being educated. But some people are just slow learners. He returned to the Riverside Road in front of the Wat and again threatened monks and villagers with a knife. Villagers took justice into their own hands and feet, beating him severely. They then bound him to a pole, leaving him in a semi-conscious state. Police were alerted and they detained the man a second time, both for his crimes and for his own safety. Ho, ho, ho. This next man is definitely on Santa's naughty list. A man in Batambong has been arrested by police after he savagely beat another man to death with a hoe. The suspect beat a 55-year-old male in a drunken rage, causing the victim's death. According to the police, the suspect confessed to his actions and alleged that the victim raped his wife seven times. Police say that the suspect's wife left him a year earlier because he was always drunk. Police have sent the suspect and the hoe to the Office of Legal Enforcement. Now on to drug crime. Police sent a suspect to court after he was arrested for possession of more than 16 kilos of drugs in a crackdown in Phnom Penh. District police were patrolling a market area when they encountered the 21-year-old Chinese suspect on a motorcycle. They stopped the man and searched him, finding five packs of drugs hidden in his backpack. The police confiscated the drugs and brought him in for further questioning. After the authorities questioned the man, there were clues that prompted them to search the suspect's residence for more drugs. This search revealed more than 16 kilos of drugs and drug processing paraphernalia. The suspect was arrested and the evidence was confiscated and sent to court for legal processing. In the Deep South now, Special Forces arrested three gunmen, including two Chinese nationals in Sihanoukville, after shots were fired in the port city. The Provincial Police Commissioner said that there appeared to have been five shots fired. The Chinese men were picked up as they attempted to drive away in a black Range Rover cat. We assume the article meant to say car, but strange things do happen in Sihanoukville. The General Commissioner said that he did not know the cause of the incident and his men were still investigating. Best guess, it is an attempt at kittennapping or a catnip deal gone wrong. In Cambodia, there is a love of a good burn. In Bante Mianche province, police burnt 140 second-hand guns. That's right, guns. They had been confiscated from various offenders in the province over the past year. The Provincial Explosives and Firearms Department chief said that the firearms were made of wood, some of which fired bullets and some were air guns. We just hope that none were loaded. Moving on to a really sad story that's quite close to home. A 24-year-old Finnish woman who was living in Kempot was killed in a hit-and-run incident on the morning of August 9th on National Road 3. The woman was riding on National Road 3 at 6.45am when a car driving in the same direction collided with her from behind and then sped away. She died upon impact and it's just so incredibly sad. The police reported that people came to assist the woman but they saw that she had died and they contacted the police. I hope the motorist can be found and brought to justice for this terrible crime. The Ministry of Public Works is seeking input to amend the existing traffic law to tighten all loopholes. It is hoped that this will improve road safety and strengthen enforcement measures. The amendment is also aimed at making sure all road users strictly abide by the law so as to reduce road accidents. 
Unfortunately, drink driving is extremely common here, even during curfew. Phnom Penh Municipal Police today sent 12 men and 5 women to court for violating curfew measures, drinking alcohol and driving while intoxicated on Tuesday night. After their arrest, police seized six motorbikes from them and checked their health. They tested negative for COVID-19, but their blood samples contained excessive amounts of alcohol. Back to KEP now. A multi-purpose port may be built in KEP province. It is earmarked to serve the tourism sector as well as acting as a maritime seaport. Provincial authorities hope that it will boost KEP's development and economy. KEP Governor Som Pisset said that the port project, a new focus of tourism development in the KEP province, would connect two beach extension projects that are currently underway. The port construction will take 24 months and is scheduled for completion in 2023. I guess it's at 0% right now. After a very long time, it seems that kids might be soon returning to the classroom. The Education Ministry will be ready to reopen secondary schools nationwide starting in either September or October, bringing an end to the in-school closure that has lasted for more than 200 days. The prolonged school closure has increased the number of children at risk of not returning to school, especially those from vulnerable groups. It's also shortened the lives of many parents. In national border news, the Cambodian government is seriously considering adjusting compulsory quarantine to facilitate visits by investors, business people and employers as a means of revitalising the economy. The Vice President of the Cambodia Chamber of Commerce noted that the government has started to ease burdens related to quarantine for investors and business people entering Cambodia. The Philippine Chamber of Commerce in Cambodia held its first online business-to-business -business networking event last Thursday. It's working with several partners to bring more Filipino businesses and brands to Cambodia. Seven well-known Filipino brands were featured, including fast food chain Jollibee. Jollibee is best known for Chicken Joy, which is delicately hand-breaded to be crispy-licious on the outside, with a secret marinade making it juicy-licious on the inside. Jeremy is a little bit too excited about this. In some more concerning news, 80 villages in Kandal province have contracted chikungunya and dengue fever, according to an official. This is the downside of COVID, I guess. Many of the other health issues faced by people in Cambodia are being forgotten. The amount of water lying around after the wet season provides a perfect breeding environment for mosquitoes, and higher numbers of chikungunya and dengue are bound to follow. Did you know that LSD is common amongst cattle here in Cambodia? Tripping cows? Sadly not. LSD, also known as lumpy skin disease, is now rampant, with hundreds of cattle suffering from it in the province bordering the Mekong River. LSD is transmitted by mosquitoes and other insects and there is no cure. Antibiotics are given to help the cattle fight infection, while treatment is continued according to the stage of the disease. Sorry, that story turned into a really bad trip. Cambodia has successfully given at least the first dose to just over 83% of the initially targeted 10 million people, with 64% being fully vaccinated. Hopefully this will save many lives and help slow the spread of the new Delta variant in Cambodia. Thank you so much for watching this week's News Moto. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. Check out our description if you'd like to see all of the other channels that we follow and also links to our social media there. In the comments section of this video, I will leave a list of links to all of the stories that we've mentioned in today's news moto, so that if you want to do some extra reading, you can do that. I'll also leave a link to that video that shows me having the COVID test if you're interested in seeing how that goes on here. It's a pretty old one, so if you're a new subscriber, you probably haven't seen that video. That's all for now, so we'll see you in the next one. Bye.